Today I'm going to show you how to use the Composer API in Corona SDK. The Composer API is used for scene management in Corona. Um, you typically have a main.lua file, which is your main scene, uh, when you begin a Corona project, but often you'll find the need to have multiple scenes or multiple screens, if you will, uh, in your app. And the way you handle multiple screens is to use Composer uh, to manage those scenes. The nice thing about Composer is that it uh, automatically takes care of uh, cleaning up the display objects and such on the screen for you as you switch screens. So let's get started. So um, I've got here a uh, just a simple app that displays um, car logos and a button here. So when I click on this button, it switches over to a new screen. If I click on that button again, it switches back. So I can just switch back and forth between these two screens. And this is all accomplished using Composer. So let me show you how. We're going to build this app um, right now uh, using a blank project. So first I'll open up my main.lua file. Now normally your main.lua file is where you're going to have all of your uh, all of your code, your functions, your display objects and such. But in this case, um, for this particular app, we're only going to need two lines. The first one is a require statement um, to uh, be able to use a composer library. So to do that, you just um, type in local composer equals require composer. So what that will do is will enable you to use composer library commands in your project. Now the second thing we're going to do is um, we're going to invoke the composer go to scene method to change scenes to our first scene. So um, I'm going to call this scene um, Mazda and um, I'm going to specify some optional parameters and to do so you, you put them in curly braces and I'm gonna say effect equals fade comma time equals um, let's say 500 milliseconds and there we go and so what will happen is um, when we open main.lua in our simulator, it's immediately going to try to open up a file, another Lua file called mazda.lua in our project folder. So we're specifying a project or a file name, a Lua file name here in this, in quotes, in the first um, parameter. So I don't have a file called mazda yet. But what I do have is this screen template. Now the screen template, I'll open it up and show you, is just simply a composer template that I pulled off the Corona API reference. Now I can show you where I got that. Um, if you go to this URL, coronalabs.com daily API library composer slash index.html, and scroll down, you will see a scene template here and I just copied this entire template and pasted it into a file and I keep it handy on my machine so that I can quickly build these uh, scenes using this template. So I'm not going to edit this template at this point. The template, the point of a template is to use it as a basis for your new uh, Lua files. So I'm going to copy that twice because we're going to need two scenes. Uh, one scene um, as we stated before is going to be called Mazda.lua. The other one is going to be called Porsche.lua. Okay, so we've got our main.lua which is really just a jumping off point to get to our first scene. So let's go ahead and open up our two scene files and um, Let's go on into Mazda now. Now, let me go ahead and get into the uh, simulator. Um, I'm going to open this project up in the simulator. Let's find our main.lua file. Put it in there. So, right now, you can see nothing is displaying on the screen uh, because there's really nothing going on in main.lua. 
um, I could save this and you'll still see nothing. So it's going to take us to Mazda, so let's start working with Mazda. Now, um, the first thing I'd like to point out is each scene file must have both this require statement uh, in the top of the file and you need to define local, uh, you need to define scene equals composer.new scene uh, in each of your scene files. You only need the, this statement in your scene files. You don't need it in your main.lua. However, in main.lua you've got to have the require statement. So all files must have the require statement and all your scene files must have the scene statement. So at the end of the file you're going to return scene. Okay, so let's go on back. Now within this uh, template file, within a scene file, you're going to have four different scene uh, events. You're going to have a create event, you're going to have a show event, you're going to have a hide event, and a destroy event. And additionally, you're going to have listeners set up, event listeners, for each of these events. Now, you may not use all of these uh, scene events, but you should have them in all of your uh, scene files. Um, you just don't have to populate them if you don't want to. Now, scene create is used whenever you want to, uh, when, whenever you're trying to set up your scene. This is where you initialize your display objects and such. However, before you put anything in here, it's a good idea to set your forward references for your uh, objects you're going to be using as a local uh, local variable. So I know I'm going to have a I have to, I'm going to have a background. So I'm going to define local BG, and I know I'm going to have a title, and I know I'm going to have a button, and um, I haven't defined them as anything, I'm just instancing these variables here so that I can refer to them later in this file. Now in, in each of these functions, the cre scene uh, create, scene show, scene hide, etc., there's a scene group that's defined as self.view. And what this does is essentially set up a special group that you're going to insert your objects into. That's how the Composer API manages um, removing objects from the screen when you go from one scene to another. If you don't put your objects in a scene group, what you'll find is that your objects remain on the screen when you switch uh, to the new scene, which is not what you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our display object. Um, we're going to set up the background first. And um, for the background, um, I don't want to specify local um, because I've already defined background as a local variable up here. So that will localize that variable only to this uh, Mazda.lua file. So let's start with uh, statement bg equals display.newRect and we're going to create a, a rectangle that fills the entire screen. Um, so display. Dot, uh, Content center x display dot content center y. That's going to be the location of the rectangle, and then the size. Content width x coordinate display dot content uh, height. That is going to be the width and height of the rectangle. Then I'm going to set the fill color to white. Let's see how that looks. Okay, good. Now we've got a white background. Now I mustn't forget to add um, this object to the scene. So scene group insert bg. Save it. Doesn't look like anything's changed. That's fine. Now uh, let's uh, add the title. Title equals display that new text. We're going to create a text object. And use the word Mazda. And um, we're going to see. We're going to place it in the center of the screen. Yeah. Uh, so display.content center x, display.content center y. For the font, I'm going to change the font to be that corporate font. Uh, 
I believe it's SF Auto Electron. And the size is going to be 60. Let's see how that looks. It might be too big. We'll see. Ah, that's good. Now, our title needs a color. So let's, it's white right now, which is why it disappeared. And we're going to make that blue. So R value, G value, B value. There's blue. And we're going to insert that object into our scene group. All right, so let's save it. And now we've got our Mazda logo on the screen. And now we're going to create a button. We're going to call it button. Um, we're going to use a rectangle for that. Um, and center it on the x-axis. Put it at the bottom of the screen on the y. Uh, height 5.9 and then make it maybe display.content times point three maybe if yeah thirty percent of the width of the screen and then display dot content height time point oh five Let's see what that looks like. Of course, we're probably not going to see. Okay, kind of see it before it disappears. That's okay. Um, we'll make that too. And then we're going to give this button a color. So button set fill color uh, red. So our value is 1. Everything is 0. Everything else. And then finally, we're going to set the scene group. We're going to insert it into the scene. And there's our square button. Now that we've created the button, we're going to create an event listener for that button. Add event listener. And we're going to listen for a tap event and execute a function called change scenes. Now I haven't created this change scenes function yet, so let's do that now. I am going to make that function outside of this uh, scene create function. And I'm going to make it a local variable. And the reason for that is I may later on want to be able to execute that same function somewhere outside of create scene. I may want to execute it in show. Um, and this ensures I'll be able to get to it. Um, the scope will remain uh, such that I can get to that function within the Mazda.lua file. But it also, the local statement, ensures that if I switch to the Porsche.lua file, I will not be executing this function. I will be having a similar function in Porsche.lua that we create, and I uh, want to make sure that um, the correct function fires whenever we uh, execute it. So local function, change scenes, and all we're going to do inside of this function is calls the call the composer's uh, go to scene method and we're going to change scenes to the Porsche.lua file. So Porsche. But you don't put Lua in there, you don't put the extension, so be careful there. Um, just the name. And we're going to put a table of um, parameters. One of those parameters is going to be the effect that is executed when the scene change occurs. So effect equals, and I'm going to use one called slide left. The Corona API has um, a whole list of effects that you can uh, use for this keyword. So check it out. Um, the next one is going to be the time in milliseconds. We're going to say 500 milliseconds. That's how long the scene change will take, which is half a second. So let's go ahead and save this. And... Um, Let's try clicking on this red button, see what happens. All right, scene change occurred, went to a black screen. That's because it went to our Porsche.lua file and there's nothing in here. So let's change that. Now, since uh, these scenes are essentially the same, uh, the only difference is one has a blue background, one has a white background, and then the text is different. We're gonna just copy this stuff from our Mazda that Lua file. 
So I'm going to copy the forward variables. I'm going to use the same variable names and the function as well. And I'm going to plop them right here in the Porsche.lua file. And let's go back and I'm going to grab the display objects, background, title, and the button, as well as the event listener. And I'm going to go in the Porsche.lua file and um, insert it in the scene create. All right. Next, um, I need to make some changes. Uh, first of all, um, we in the composer go to scene statement. We don't want to go to Porsche. We're already there. So we need to change it to Mazda. And I'm going to change the slide left effect to slide right. So it just looks like it just slides back and forth. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background color. So right now the background color is white. So we're going to change that to RGB blue. And then the title, we're going to change the word Mazda to Porsche. And we're going to change the name of the typeface to the typeface that the Porsche logo uses. So I think it's called 911 Porsche, like that. And I suspect that it's going to be too big at 60 because that's a really wide, those characters are quite wide compared to the Mazda one. So I'm going to try 40 and see how that looks. Now the fill color is already blue. So if we do this, leave it that way, you're not going to be able to see the title. We're going to make it white one 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 and the button's going to remain the same and i believe that's all we need to do so let's go ahead and save and app launches let's click the button and there's our porsche screen let's try clicking that button again and it goes back back and forth and that is basically how to set up a very simple app using the Composer API to manage multiple scenes. So let's take a few minutes and talk about the layout of the scene files themselves. As I stated before, there are four events um, that each of these scene files are going to have. There's a create event, uh, the show event, the hide event, and the destroy event. We worked primarily with the scene create event and this is where we created the display objects themselves that we were used on our screen. We only needed this uh, for our simple app since it only had two screens and really nothing happens on those screens. There's no movement of objects or anything. Additionally in my scene create I added the uh, event listener to my button. Now it's important to understand that scene create is only executed once when an app is run. So if I launch the app, I go to my first scene, say I switch scenes, and then I come back again to the original scene, scene create is not going to be executed again. Now, scene show, on the other hand, is executed every time the app uh, switches scenes. So whenever the scene is exited, and then you come back to it, scene show will fire off again. Additionally, scene show has two phases, the will phase, in which code is run before objects are shown on the screen and the did phase and that um, this is code that happens after the objects are shown on the screen. Now will phase is a good place to reposition objects that may have moved uh, during the say gameplay if it's a game uh, back to their original positions. So you want to have those move before they're actually displayed on the screen. The did phase is a great place to start any game timers or timers in general to start your animations and start playing audio. Now, um, in addition to scene show, we've got scene hide and these sort of um, work hand in hand together. So anything you did in the scene show did phase, you're going to want to undo in the scene hide will phase. 
So if you started some timers, you want to cancel those timers, stop those timers. If you began animations here, you're going to stop your animations there. You'll stop your audio here as well. If you did anything in your scene show will phase, um, you'll probably have to undo them in your uh, scene hide did phase. Finally, we've got the scene destroy uh, event. And that is usually executed only whenever you run into a low memory situation for your app. I haven't really run into that myself, but um, if there's something that's absolutely critical you do should your app run low on memory, then you're going to want to uh, put that code in here. So one last thing I'd like to uh, show you is um, I want to show you the importance of uh, adding your objects into a scene group. Um, let's take a look at what happens if I forget to add the title to the scene group. So let's just comment this out and save it. And um, if you look at that, let's restart it. You'll kind of see how Mazda actually shows up right away as opposed to fading in with the rest of the scene. Let's take a look at that with the scene inserted, with the object inserted and see how the logo actually shows up with um, with the background and the button. But if I remove it from the uh, scene group, it shows up immediately. So that's already a clue that something's not quite right. The next clue is going to be when you click on this red button to switch scenes and you'll see something funny going on in the background. And what's happening is the Mazda logo has remained in the background and the new uh, Porsche title has come in uh, to overlay it. So that is a problem. Uh, and I know now that, oh, I've got something that's uh, not in a scene group. So to fix it, you just add it back into the scene group, check it, and make sure everything looks good. So now you know what happens whenever you forget to put the uh, objects in their groups. Um, also, I'd like to point out that if you, the objects have to be in a group of some sort. Uh, so you could have other groups defined within your Corona, uh, your, your composerized application, um, and just as long as they're in a group. If they're not in any group at all, then Composer will not manage them whatsoever. I hope this was helpful in getting you started using the Composer API for scene management in Corona SDK. Be sure to check out my other tutorials at Madman's App Dev How To YouTube channel. Thanks.